Coming up, the CDC announced fully vaccinated people do not have to wear a mask indoors when gathering with other vaccinated people. An in-depth overview of what is happening with Andrew Cuomo in light of the sexual allegations against him. Hello and welcome to WEBN Political Pulse. I'm Pari Tamayo and these are the top political stories we've been following. A mask mandate and social distancing guidelines are no longer required for those who are fully vaccinated and gathering privately indoors. The CDC announced today that fully vaccinated Americans can gather with other vaccinated people without wearing a mask. The guidance also states that vaccinated people can come together with people considered at low risk for disease. The Associated Press gives the example of vaccinated grandparents able to visit healthy children and grandchildren. As more adults are getting vaccinated, the growing demand for guidance from health officials surrounds the question of, can we do what we did before the pandemic? CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky called the guidance a quote, first step towards restoring normalcy in the country. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo has been accused of sexual misconduct. The first person to accuse him was Lindsay Boylan. Four other women have come forward with similar allegations since then. Cuomo released a statement last week claiming his words may, quote, have been misinterpreted as unwanted flirtation, end quote. The governor has denied the allegations but has expressed embarrassment for what he thinks is a misunderstanding. Cuomo's misconduct wasn't only directed at women. Two male aides say the general environment of their workplace was toxic and hostile. They claim they were often called names that mock them, quote, not being tough enough. The female workers say the suggestive comments and questions they received from Cuomo seem more part of a general environment than direct propositions. This environment, they claim, was part of an office culture that was degrading to young women. Como was already under scrutiny for his actions relating to the COVID-19 pandemic. His administration failed to report thousands of deaths of nursing home residents. As a combination with the sexual misconduct scandals, he is now losing New Yorker votes. Some of his colleagues, including state senator major leader Andrea Stewart Cousins, call for his resignation. She claims that the allegations are distracting government and that his resignation would help them focus on something more productive. However, Cuomo believes his contributions to the pandemic situation are too important for him to resign. He has even stated that there is, quote, no way he resigns, end quote. He hopes the public will give more weight to the investigation first, even though he believes that alleged victims are in the right to speak out. Regardless of his statement, the support for him is decreasing. The reasoning seems to be a combination of his response to both the COVID-19 situation and his misconduct scandals. Now we go out to White House correspondent Carly Bronkema. What do you have for us, Carly? Thanks, Patty. Democrat leaders are speaking out about the allegations made towards Governor Andrew Cuomo. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the allegations are, quote, serious and credible and should be independently investigated. President Biden also supports an independent review, which was announced by White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki yesterday. Both leaders have emphasized that the women accusing Cuomo need to be treated with respect and dignity. President Biden's COVID-19 response is supported by a majority of Americans. A new ABC News and Ipsos poll found 68% of Americans approve of the president's approach. This approval comes from 98% of Democrats and 35% of Republicans. While some states, such as Texas and Mississippi, have started aggressive reopening plans, a majority of Americans say this is happening too quickly. The same survey found that 56% of Americans think loosening mask mandates is happening too quickly. With only 22% of Americans having received at least one dose of the vaccine, we may see another spike in cases. Biden has fired the general counsel of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Sharon Gustafson was appointed by former President Trump 
in 2018 and still had two years left in her tenure. While presidents have the right to appoint their own general counsel, Biden is receiving backlash from many conservative groups. They say Gustafson's firing goes against Biden's calls for unity. Gustafson was initially asked to step down, but refused to, which led to her firing. Biden is seeking to promote voter access after signing an executive order yesterday. This move commemorates the 56th anniversary of the Civil Rights March from Selma to Montgomery. The order tells federal agencies to increase access to election information and voter registration. This includes asking these organizations to submit a plan on how they will increase voter participation. Biden addressed the Martin and Coretta King Unity Breakfast before signing the order. He says that, quote, every eligible voter should be able to vote and have that vote counted. That's all I have for White House News. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Carly. Coming up, Massachusetts residents struggling with their vaccination appointments and a new Senate COVID relief bill passed. Did you know bicyclists are often injured by vehicle doors opening into their path? To prevent hitting a cyclist with a car door, drivers should use their right hand to open the door, which forces them to look back over their shoulders so they can see people approaching on bicycles. Passengers should do the same using their left hands in case someone is riding a bicycle to the right of the vehicle. This simple safety procedure is an important step in keeping our roads safe. Remember, scan the street for wheels and feet. You're watching WEBN News. Some Massachusetts residents have been turned away from their vaccination appointments. The issue appears to be a communication mistake between the state's call-in system 211 and the company that runs the vaccination site. The vaccine company, Curative, said in a statement that the data sharing issues made it impossible to keep the appointments. They say that, quote, the state and Curative are taking steps to ensure this won't happen again, end quote. Dozens of demonstrators hit the streets once more to protest against police brutality. This new protest took place on Saturday and was part of the movement from all across the country. Brock Satter, one of the organizers, says the central demands of this nationwide demonstration are, quote, to jail killer cops, prosecute the police, and to reopen all past cases of police brutality, end quote. The families of two men killed in Massachusetts joined the Saturday rally as well and demand the cases to be reopened. The 1.9 trillion COVID relief bill has been passed by the Senate. This comes after 24 hours of votes and debates. The bill's aim is to help lower income Americans, small businesses, schools, and the hospitality and tourism industries. It will also help state and local governments. I really want to thank the American people for making all this possible. I say, well, how do they make it possible? Well, quite frankly, without the overwhelming bipartisan support of the American people, this would not have happened. The bill will now head over to the House and will have to reconcile key changes before it reaches President Biden's desk. The Senate hopes this will happen quickly as unemployment benefits will soon expire for millions of Americans. A Mexican restaurant in Texas has received threats by its patrons to call Immigration and Customs Enforcement on them. This comes after the business refused to work and accept clients without a mask. The business owner says that the customers are not happy about being asked to wear a mask. He says the request is often met with protests and threats. Texas Governor Greg Abbott announced there will not be a mandatory mask mandate anymore. He also stated establishments are allowed to be at their maximum capacities. Regardless of this, there are several business owners who will continue requiring masks in their establishments. This example following after Texas lifted their masks mandate. For more details on Texas and other states following suits across the country, we go to our political analyst, Sammy Neves, for more. Sammy? Thank you, Patty. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has lifted the state's mandatory mask mandate. He also has dropped limitations on the number of people businesses can serve. This decision drew a lot of criticism 
from other elected officials, such as President Joe Biden and the California governor, Gavin Newsom. This decision marks the beginning of the COVID-19 regulations being lifted due to the vaccine rollout. But, but, but it is criticized for being before the entire country is able to be vaccinated. Other states are already following Texas steps. Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves also announced he would be signing a very similar executive order that lifts the mask mandate and allows all businesses to reopen. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey and the Governor of Utah, Spencer Cox, promised to lift, the, to lift their mask mandates in April. South Carolina government Harry McMaster announced that face masks would no longer be mandatory in government buildings and restaurants. Even though health officials strongly advise against this, this states on their, on their decision, based on the data available by the world meters, it is predicted those states' decision to lift their mask mandates would not cause a spike in the number of deaths. The 14 states that never had a mask mandate are doing better than the states that do have those orders in place. From the 10 states with the highest COVID death toll in the United States, only two of them don't have mass mandates. Despite having the second oldest population in the country and having very few COVID restrictions, Florida managed to have a COVID death toll below the U.S. average. From the 14 states that never had a mandate, 10 of them are below or similar to the U.S. average. Most Republicans do approve the end of COVID restrictions. However, most Democrats do not. Texas Governor Greg Abbott stands by his decision, stating that this is, a, this is the right time to lift mandates. Exactly when would be the right time? Would it be when everybody gets a vaccine? Will it be when COVID is completely over? That is the overview of states beginning to lift COVID-19 regulations. Back to you, Patty. Thank you, Sami. Coming up next, we cover the protests in Myanmar and the legalization of marijuana in Mexico. We'll be right back. During high school, I hung with the wrong crowd and I never graduated. I helped Santiago in many different ways, like all fathers do, because he always wanted to go to college. I felt a little embarrassed to come back to school, but eventually, once I came here, I knew that it's for a bigger goal. He was very dedicated, hardworking. He connected with his teachers. He connected with other students. That was one of the key reasons why he was able to keep forging ahead. It was amazing to see him graduate. This was one thing that meant so much to him, and of course, it meant so much to us, too. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed. That support is everything. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. You're watching WEBM News. Tensions are rising in Myanmar's biggest city, Yangon, as police continue to arrest protesters. Multiple sources have claimed they went as far as to occupy hospitals and universities to carry on with this task. The purpose of these reactions are to instill fear in the citizens if they attempt to defy authorities. However, a statement from the Myanmar Labor Unions that was released Sunday night says, Protesters will continue the strike until they, quote, receive their democracy back. Mexican lawmakers are preparing a debate proposal to legalize recreational marijuana. This decision could position Mexico as having the world's largest legal cannabis market. The Senate approved the leg legalization of medical marijuana almost four months ago. Mexico's former president, Vicente Fox, claims to see potential for Mexico to cash in on a much-needed job creation, economic investment, and medical advancement. It is noted that a regulated cannabis market could also help lessen cartel violence, which has become a huge threat to the Mexican people's security. 
Now we go to our international correspondent, Annie Bennett. What's the latest in the world, Annie? Thanks, Patty. In global news today, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro told residents to stop fussing and whining about COVID-19. Bolsonaro has continuously undermined the effects of the pandemic and has spoken out against safety measures such as social distancing. Brazil has the third most cases in the world and the second highest death toll. Hospitals are on the verge of collapse and new variants are further worrying the country's health experts. A high-ranking health official said that Brazil is, quote, experiencing the worst outlook for the pandemic since it started, end quote. The Chinese government has called on President Biden to stop supporting Taiwan. The small territory has long called for independence from China. Taiwan is the victim to a number of human rights abuses. The U.S. State Department said that Biden plans to keep, quote, deepening our unofficial ties with democratic Taiwan, end quote. China's foreign minister is warning Biden that the Taiwan issue is dangerous and that he is, quote, playing with fire, end quote. And today is International Women's Day. All around the world, people are paying their respects. In Paris, activists laid flowers at the Iranian embassy to show support for a women's rights activist who was arrested in 2019. The arrest came after a mother and daughter handed out flowers in support for the holiday while not wearing headscarves. The woman was arrested for, quote, inciting and facilitating corruption and prostitution, end quote. Near us, Mexico is seeing around 100 different protests for women's rights today. Barricades were put up and activists called out the president for supporting an accused rapist. In similar news, Polish abortion activists are rallying for feminism today while also reflecting on what has been accomplished. One woman said that, quote, this situation isn't good and it's worth fighting for, end quote. I'm Annie Bennett, and this has been your International News. Thanks, Annie. As mentioned previously, today is International Women's Day. This day celebrates the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women. It also highlights the problems women face day to day and in the professional environment. This is a day that is also a call to action for accelerating gender equality. In these unpredictable times, women we see you and hear your demands. You deserve to be celebrated. Keep fighting, keep speaking up, and keep being strong. We will persevere in this fight. We wish you all a happy International Women's Day. Thank you for watching WEBN Political Pulse. For more, visit our website webn.tv and our YouTube channel, WEBN TV Boston. Have a good night.